All right, um, in the garage today, not on the bench today, is a set of Bozak B305s. Probably late 50s vintage, I think. We'll find out here in a little bit. Um, looks like someone at some point started sanding the finish off. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do about that. There is some staining on that speaker there towards the bottom. There's there's also a shadow, so they look kind of dirty, but those are actually shadows from uh, my truck and stuff, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they are actually. Yeah, maybe that is like a stain on that one. So anyway, um, cosmetically, they need some work. They They sound pretty good, low volume, but then as soon as you start to drive them, um, they get pretty distorted. Initially I had them connected to my ICO, which is 40, I think it's 40 or 45 watts per channel. Um, this, the uh, owner's manual for the Bozaks recommend at least 30 watts. So I also ran them through the Techniques uh, SA5760, which is 165 watts, same results. So what I suspect is that the capacitors, if, if these I mean, these were built in probably the late 50s. Uh, those capacitors are probably original and, you know, pushing, you know, they're over 60 years old. Uh, the way to get to the crossovers to look at that and also look at the drivers is I have to flip these over and go through the bottom, which I will be doing. So, um, yeah, so uh, kind of the intent with these is, you know, to get them... Uh, sounding good and then and then work on the cosmetics and get them looking good i don't know what that will entail i don't know if i'll stay with the original lighter color which is what i it would definitely lean towards doing um i like keeping things more or less stock when i can so anyway i'm going to flip one of these over uh, and uh, take the bottom off now there are some crossover modifications that um, they're, they're Tobin mods, and this is just research that I've been doing over the last 24 hours. And the crossover itself and or the speakers that are installed will kind of um, indicate what options there are in terms of uh, the necessity of doing that modification, if that makes sense. So if it's one crossover, you know, um, and I don't remember the exact model number. We'll see it in a minute. Yeah, but if it's one crossover, the Tobin mod isn't really um, uh, po possible, I'll say. But I, again, I have to do a little bit more research on that. But if it's the other one, then it's highly recommended that you do it. But only if you have certain speakers in here, from what I understand. Again, give it, given limited research on these. So there, there will be some... Uh, uh, some further investigation after I open these up and further research into exactly what direction I'll take these. So what I'm going to do now is I got to move that big ass techniques, which is like the heaviest thing I've ever moved. Uh, oh, and there's a Wurlitzer kind of all in one I'm working on. That's, that's a little different with a Gerard turntable on top. I just get, I get weird stuff all the time. There's some JBLs I'm working on covering all the other crap I got to work on. So anyway, I'm going to move the techniques, flip one of these speakers over, and then we'll get in the inside and see what we have going on. So these things weigh 100 pounds, legitimately 100 pounds each. They're, if you're familiar with Bozak uh, Grand Concerts, or Concert Grands, um, basically <laughs> it's like you cut one of those in half, those are 200 pounders. Uh, the way the bottom comes off is all these slotted screws, they're not Phillips, so... They're uh, kind of a pain in the butt. And the other thing that I'm really, really worried about is sometimes the panel is glued. And if I'm, if you can see, it looks like there is probably, sorry, that it is probably glued, which is gonna make taking this apart um, suck. So we'll see. And that's where the speaker, whoops, that's where the, come on, focus, 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 focus. There we go. Man, camera's freaking out on me. That's where the speaker comes out, or the speaker wire comes out of the bottom. 
So let me grab my screwdriver and uh, see if I can get this thing apart. So luckily the bottom came off as one piece. I thought it was going to be this middle piece that came out, but it was actually the whole bottom that came out. So that is made it much easier, but do you see some issues? Someone has rem <laughs> removed, well, I, I don't, I think in these older Bozaks that it used some kind of paper insulation, but this thing is, there's no insulation. So that's a problem, right? That could cause some distortion. Because the distortion, I couldn't tell what speaker it was coming from. Um, it does have the crossovers that are, I think these are the crossovers that are preferred um, because uh, you can do that Tobin modification on these, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, this cover, I think this is a cover that comes off. So I'm going to unscrew this cover and then we can look at the capacitors and see what we have going on in terms of if they are originals or not. Um, these are B199As and we have a B209A. So I think this is a later production model, but again, I'm no Bozak expert. Um, there might be a date stamp on these somewhere. So I'll have to see if I can find that as I'm kind of poking around. But let me grab a screwdriver, pull that. Uh, I, the capacitor should be marked with a date. So I'm gonna pull that cover off and see what uh, the state of these capacitors are. All right, so got that cover off. So there's some interest. There's some interesting writing in here. Cabinet, some measurements, right? 22 inches long for curtains. So what it's talking about there is actually behind the woofers. I think on either side, since there's a, a cross brace there, there's actually a piece of of uh, of fiberglass or paper or um, uh, some kind of deadening material that will actually hang like a curtain behind it. And I think that's what that is referencing. 22 inches long for curtains. So I'd have to see what, where 22 inches lands. Yeah, the b bot Because these are... I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. These are 36 and a half inches wide. Oh, 22 inches long, not 22 inches wide. Okay. So that makes sense. Uh, so here are the original caps. Um, some of these have dates where you can see them when they were made. There's also, a, I think that is an upside down 62. Now I don't know if that is referencing the year these were made or not. Um, yeah, I don't see any dates on the caps that I can easily see. Um, but these are all the originals, which is what I suspected. So if this, if these were made in 62, then that makes these capacitors 60, 60 years old. Most likely, I don't think they've been replaced. That one there looks a little sketchy. Uh, I'm going to put the camera down, though, and I'm going to see if I can tell what uh, the date on those capacitors is. So let me put this down and kind of poke around and see what I can find <laughs> All right, so I think the capacitors are dated 61. There's a, a Bozak BO3, uh, Bozak 302 restoration video that I'll link in the description where they pull the capacitors out of the 302. And the date stamp is different on most of the capacitors, but there's one that has a very similar date stamp to this one. And it ended in 58, if I, saw it correctly when I was going through that video and kind of pausing frame by frame. So I believe this is probably a 61, 62. Nothing else is really marked um, in terms of a year. So anyway, um, these are five microfarad, 50 volts. So I need to replace one, two, three, four, what, seven, seven for each speaker. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about doing the the Tobin modification. I'll, I'll continue to research it, you know, while I come up with exactly what I want to do. 
but those capacitors should be easy enough to find and um, then I need to work on getting some material for the inside of the cabinet because that will definitely cause some issue oh, Ralph's barking. that will definitely cause um, some issues with distortion so replace the caps actually insulate these the way they're supposed to be insulated and uh, then kind of see where we're at and go from there so um, in terms of what else I'm going to do with these I don't know um, Again, I don't want to really think about the cosmetic for right now. I really don't want to pull that off. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of a gold glitter to the material. I mean, <laughs> mid-century modern. Yeah, you can't really tell them in this in this light or at this angle. Let me see if I can get my flashlight and show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can get some. So I don't know. Yeah, see, maybe you can. I don't know if you can see the sparkle there, but it's full of gold glitter, which is uh, amazing. So anyway, let me go do some shopping, see if I can find some uh, damping material for the inside of the cabinet. I mean, I guess I could just use fiberglass insulation. I could do that, but I know there are some acoustic um, kind of recycled material type um, insulators like batting that I may that I may look at. It'll, it really is going to come down to whatever's whatever makes the most sense you know, from a cost perspective. I know fiberglass would probably be much cheaper. So anyway, well, that's exciting. I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that it's got the original caps and that it's just missing the insulation. So maybe the other one's the same way and that's contributing to that distortion. So um, I think I'm gonna end part one right here and I'm gonna go do some shopping and wait uh, until that stuff comes in and then we'll, uh, recap and insulate the cabinet and see what happens so until then stay tuned uh, as always if you like what you see hit like hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video well I forgot to uh, film the first cabinet that I put uh, insulation in so I wanted to show you what I'm doing so neither cabinet had insulation and uh, these have curtains so fiberglass curtains they sit behind the woofers. Uh, so basically I had to put insulation around uh, or on the top, on the back, on the sides. I've created the curtains. I've got to do a little strip here because uh, the other speaker had a strip right underneath the woofers. And what I'm going to do with the bottom, and let me go over to the other one and see if I can show you. But basically, I'm taking some speaker terminals. And let's see if I can get this down here. And I am, let's see where are they at, right there. So I'm just mounting two little speaker terminals uh, on the bottom panel. So that way I don't have to worry about using the little wire that they have coming out, kind of drilled, they drilled a hole just through the bottom. So this way, these are connected to those terminals, and then uh, you can plug whatever speakers into them. So uh, I'm down to just that one little strip, uh, drilling a hole in that, and then mounting the terminals and putting the speaker back together. And once I get that done, then I will test to see how they sound, see if that took care of that distortion. I did find caps. The caps are really expensive. Um, I'm just looking at this crossover. Um, well, that now that's an N102, so that's weird. I think I have. I'm gonna have to look at the film, but I think I have a different crossover in each speaker. Cause this is an N102. The other one's an N. Uh, I have to look at the film. I think they're different crossovers. Well, no, maybe they're not. Anyway. Uh, these take 14 5 microfarad 50 volt caps and the, the, the least expensive ones I found were $8 a cap. The ones that a lot of people recommend are $14 a cap. So 14 caps at 14 bucks a piece plus shipping is like 275 bucks. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to what these sound like. The caps do need to be replaced. I just don't know if I'm going to do them right now or if I'm going to wait to do them. So anyway, I'm going to 
wrap this other speaker up and then the next segment you will see me testing them and hopefully they'll sound okay. All right, so I uh, turn this down. So I think I eliminated the rattle in the Bozak. Uh, what I found was this one here still had a little bit of a rattle to it, but I, so what I did is I removed the woofers and found that the baskets are two piece. So uh, the screws that were holding the top portion of the basket to the bottom portion were kind of loose. So I tightened those, I tightened the woofers. And I think I've pretty much eliminated the any rattle that I heard. Plus the uh, insulation was all installed yesterday. Uh, I have not done this one yet and now I'm noticing a little bit of a rattle here, but it could be that the stereo is sitting on top of it, that, that Dynaco. Uh, and it could also be the same thing. So I'm gonna open this one up and see what's going on. What I don't know is what I'm gonna do with the cabinets. Now, the weird thing is the pictures that I see online of these, like actual photos, it's like a dark walnut. And Sorry, I was uh, interrupted there. So I think what I was talking about was uh, pictures online and dark walnut. And you can see where when whoever tried to sand the finish off, I think you can see, I'm not gonna say it was stained dark walnut, but it, it definitely had a darker color to it. You can, you can see it there. So I'm kind of not sure what to do with that, but it's gonna take me a while to, to get these to a point where I can apply any kind of finish to it. Uh, and then I don't know about, you, you can see where there was a stain, like some liquid spilled on it. And then there's a, a stain on the bottom too. And the fabric is pretty, I mean, it's it's all right, but it's it's got rips all over it. See some rips there. So thinking uh, probably replace the fabric. Not sure, I'm not sure yet, but. I just wanted to get these work into where, uh, you know, they weren't rattling. I wanted to make sure that there there were no issues. I did find some caps. I'm going to order them at some point. I'm not um, in a real hurry to do that. But uh, so what I'm going to do with these is keep them in the garage for a little bit. I'm going to work on one of the cabinets and see if I can remove all this finish and then figure out what I want to do. I, I kind of like the light wood. But I just don't know yet. I just don't know. Um, anyway, so I'll have to think about that and come up with some kind of plan. So anyway, those are the Bozaks. Um, yeah, so there'll be another part at some point when I figure out what I'm going to do. But for right now, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, pause this series while I figure out what's going on. And then I've got a whole bunch of other stuff i got to pick up and work on. So these will sit in here for a while. Anyway, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will catch you in another video.